I'm here to talk to you way too quickly about how you can build a SharePoint document library approvals system. And um, I just at least a layer of approvals because we've got multiple layers going on here. I would introduce myself really briefly. I'm Lindsay Shelton and I'm an application programmer at the Stowers Institute for Medical Research. I like to joke that the scientists are working to save lives and I'm working to help the scientists save files. So, you know, putting in the, the work um, in, in whatever way I can. I'm a former teacher. I spent 10 years as a classroom teacher and I'm also a very proud cat mom. So if any of that is interesting to you, feel free to connect with me at lshelton underscore tech on Twitter. So most of my presentations have to do with a specific use case or um, you know something that's actually going on in my work life. So what did our users need? Where did this come from? One of our departments had a pretty outdated old access database on-prem system for their standard operating procedure documents. So this was something they needed to access regularly. There's you know legal things and regulation reasons why they needed to be able to get to all of these SOP documents because this library governs everything that this department does. And it's also something that the entire institute needs to be able to see. And these were difficult to get to and all outdated. So they wanted to have a more modern solution. So some of our requirements were, we wanted something that was mobile friendly because when the lab members go, what we call behind the barrier, they don't have access to laptops or computers. So they could only access these SOPs on their phone. So we figured let's go cloud-based, uh, let's do something that's less restrictive, but still you know, controlled by things like MFA, Azure AD, et cetera. And they also needed us to be able to bring over multiple levels and layers of approvals. It's not just a one and done where one person is assigned the approval. They look it over. They say, yep, the SOP is good to go for another year. So the basic process you'll notice is not actually very basic because there's a lot of words on this screen, but we essentially have five different flows going on. We have a scheduled daily flow where, uh, and this is just to give you an overview of the process if you're needing to build something similar for your own organization. We have a scheduled daily flow that looks at a completed date and says, okay, if that's 335 days out, meaning, okay, we're within 30 days of needing to review, let's do a conditional filter, let's clear the fields, you know, which also sets the content approval to draft again and lets them know this needs to be reviewed. We have three different layers of approvals, two that are more individual based and then a group vote, which is really complicated. We're having to go into SharePoint, grab the group members, and then they also wanted to be able to let multiple groups do the approval, sending out to vote. So that I'm not even going to attempt to show you that flow because we would need a workshop versus a 14 minute session. Um, what the supervisors have been trained to do is we have numbered flows where they'll go into this SharePoint document library and they will run the flows in order, assign the reviewer, and then we just use four a selected file triggers to get all of these approvals going. We've also got approval reminders built into this and we had to do a special step where we write all of the historical data about who's approved what and when to a SharePoint list because at one caveat we've discovered working with approvals and document libraries is if I open the document in the word application, it won't let me save it. It won't if, if I've got a comment field longer than 255 characters. So we write all of that over and then we have a, the last flow which clears out all of the information because we've already written it to a separate list. We set content approval to approved and we write an approved updated copy to a master library. But the most basic thing that I'm going to talk to you about is if you want to do an, a, a basic document library with approvals for your own purposes, you need a SharePoint document library with columns for who is the reviewer, which is a person or a group field, 
we have it set that you can pick multiple people. A supervisor review status field, which is a choice column with choices for yes, no, and pending. And then uh, supervisor review comments, multi-line text field. And then you go out to the samples gallery that David talked about and find my flow request review and approval for a selected file. Uh, it looks like this. I'll show it to you in a moment just so I, I'll walk you really quickly through the whole process for how you could get working with this flow today. Um, but one thing I just really want to point out that we've learned the hard way through building this whole solution. If any action, any SharePoint action needs to be done to the document library, you need file is locked error handling if it fails. Because if the file is even opened by anyone, which a document library, yeah, the file is going to be opened by people. The actions will fail if the file is opened by someone. So you need, want error handling or else your flow is going to stop over and over and over again, and you don't want that. So to the demo, I'm going to go to the samples gallery and I just navigated right to mine the request review and approval for a selected file. All you have to do is go into the solution folder and all of these instructions are in the readme and I could just say download this zip file. Then I go into my Microsoft uh, Power Automate environment. This is updated import package legacy and I select the file that I want to import, which is that zip file. I don't want to update. I just want to create this as new and I can give it whatever name I want. I can select my connections and import it. And then all you have to do, you can customize this a lot more. Like David said, this is a starting point, but the main thing you have to do is X out my values for the site address and library name, and then put in your own. So this is actually a site called Doc Library, and the library name is called Documents. So um, to go over this flow, we're just, we have, like I said, we have four selected file. We're collecting the reviewer email as a variable and then we're just getting the information about the file. Now, this update metadata one and two variables, by the way, the code is also commented. I've got notes on everything that you'll be able to see to explain each part. This is a Boolean variable that we set to false, and that is because we use this every time we're trying to update that document library value so that we can do the error checking because when this variable is turned to true, we exit that error checking loop. I've added some extra stuff because we had lots of UAT and lots of use. This has been in place for about a year. And so we've got, they wanted to be able to put more than one supervisor in there. They wanted to be able to assign one flow multiple times. So that's why some of these extra variables are in here. As long as the file is here, we create an approval. We assign it to the reviewer email, which is a variable we've created. And then we have the error handling, which is really what I wanted to highlight. So this was a do until loop that will go until update metadata, which we know is set to false right now, is equal to true. So I'm trying to update the file properties and go in and say, here's the name of the supervisor who's reviewing this. This was another requirement from our uh, lab that we were working with. So they wanted the supervisors to be able to just filter in a view and say, here are the six SOPs I need to review. Well, the file, if it's locked, it would have just terminated this flow and we would have had to start the approval over again. So instead, let me walk you through the logic of this really quick in a slide instead of trying to just do it in the uh, flow. So any sort of SharePoint action, if we use configure run after, if it fails or timeout, we send an email that the file is locked. If it succeeds, we skip it. We don't need to send anyone an email. We have an extra step where we check if the file is locked by updating SharePoint. We're not actually updating it. We just have the action there and then we don't touch any of the fields. If it lets us update SharePoint, that means the file is closed and we're good to go. So we skip and we set update metadata to true, which ends the loop. If we can't update SharePoint, we set a delay of 10 minutes and then restarts the loop, which is trying to update SharePoint again. So you can set that delay for whatever you want. I just have it set to 10 minutes. What we want this to look like is green, green. We can update the file properties. We skip sending an email. We 
checked that the file is not locked by updating SharePoint. We skip that delay. We set update metadata to true. So that error handling is in here. The configure run after what that looks like is we just go to the three dots, configure run after. So by default, it's set to is successful. So if I say to has failed and has timed out, we make it so this flow will just continue to loop instead of timing out, erroring out, and having to start the approval all over again. Um, I think I'm probably close to time, but basically we wait for the approval and then we do some extra stuff. I've got all the comments in here. We have error checking again, and then at the very end, we send a confirmation email that we've gone through the approval. One other thing that we did do with this solution that I'm um, pretty excited about after checking on is we also did turn the doc library into my first and only power app. Um, it's nothing fancy UI wise. We designed it to mimic a legacy application they were already using just for change management. We wanted it to be something familiar to them. And in the labs, this is really easy for them because they can just click the arrow and open the SOP and view it, and they can filter by department. And I checked on the stats. I figured, okay, I showed them how to put it on their phones and, and do that, but they actually are still using it a year after launch. Last takeaways. Most you probably know most of this, but things that we always try to do in my organization, make a service account, the owner of the flow and the connections, not your account and share it with all admins so you can take a vacation sometimes. Rename the section and leave notes like you saw in my code, even if it's just for future you. Like I said, I did this a year ago, and so I would have no idea why I did some of the things I did. And then UAT, UAT, UAT. A lot of these tweaks that you see might not make sense immediately, but if you read the notes, we did it for a reason. It's because our users wanted those features in there, and so we wanted to make it ha make them happy and make it work. Lastly, I just want to cite um, Thrive Next Gen. They were the source for the basic file lock check pattern. They were the first source I found because um, I didn't bookmark the actual site I used. So just wanted to give them a shout out. All right, that is it for me. Hopefully I didn't talk too fast. No, you were awesome, Lindsay. Fantastic. Really, really great stuff. Uh, I, I did have one question. What is this vacation thing that you speak of, right? Like, I'm not, I think all of us I've are like- I've heard rumor this? about it. I, I saw it on, Instagram, there's trees <laughs> and there's sand, but I don't know. I've still got to figure it out for sure. Maybe we can set up a, a virtual call to talk about what that looks like. Not yeah, <laughs> awesome I think that's stuff. A great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Really, really awesome demo. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm.